Hey everyone, um, this is a video about the meta of bold action, where we are at at the moment, what is going on. This is sort of a summary of everything I've been doing for for the past year, the tournaments I've been following, the tournaments I've been attending, the tournaments I've been hosting. Um, so it's sort of a, a summary of what people think is good in bold action right now. Right, let's go. The first thing we need to discuss is what even is a meta. Is it, um, it's, it's not actually what most people use it as. Um, many people that I hear talk about or use the word meta use it to describe what they think is, uh, is overpowered or uh, not fun about bold action. That's not actually what, what the words mean. Um, so the meta is not how you break bold action. It's not even what it, it is that the game itself is broken down into. So sometimes a, a games becomes like, well, you can only do this one thing if, if you want to win. That's not actually what I think me the meta is. I think the meta is constantly changing. Um, it changes every time a new book comes out. And my definition would be what a group of people in a certain locality at a certain time think is good in this game. So, and that can change radically and has changed. Just the time I've been playing Bold Action, what the group around me, the, the competitive group in Denmark, what we think is good has changed massively several times. So, um, so that I think is what meta is. Is it definitive? No, definitely not, because it changes all the time. As I said, it, it changes, and sometimes people come up with counter metas, or um, or we sort of there was a whole period where we were, we were all like flamethrowers. That's that's it. It can break anything. It it'll just it'll wreck any army. Just run with flamethrowers, and then all of a sudden, people were like, we started being able to play against them, and it. Nobody plays flamethrowers here anymore. Not massively like they still do in some places in the UK. So, so that is what I mean when I say meta. What a certain group of people, in this case competitive bold action players around the world, think is good in the game. And one way of looking at it is we can do what's called a negative meta, where we look at what people are comping for their tournaments. Especially when we have like um, casual players or thematic players, what they will discourage at their events. And there are certain units that they will discourage. And I actually forgot to, to type in one more thing that will be discouraged, but I'll get to that. Because um, I'll, I'll just say now, um, most of the time, uh, thematic tournaments will disallow tank platoons and they will disallow um, anything where you can double platoon anything because double platooning is typically very very bad for thematic play but it really boosts competitive play so um, so that will typically go away um, at the same time Many of the thematic tournaments comp these units that I've listed here. Multi-rocket launchers, uh, we see that quite often. And I think it's because multi-rocket launchers, they may not be absolutely good, but they can be very frustrating to play against, especially for new players if they don't know how to play against them. Um, and if they, they don't know what it is that they actually do, they can be very frustrating to play against because... It, they're, they're very hit and miss, and there's very little you can do about that hit and miss. They'll hit you, kill you, or they won't. That's just what happens. And that's also why I think I, I call the multi-rocket launcher um, build, I call it the new basher, because it's typically something where if you have that build, new players will not know what to do against it, and they'll lose massively. So a new basher. Um, Flamers, many uh, thematic tournaments also um, comp flamers, so like you can only bring two or whatever. Um, that that's quite common. Um, so flamers are also good, I guess. 
Gurkhas, um, Gurkhas are clearly, um, arguably at least, I've argued for this. Um, go and watch my video on top 10 assaulters of bold action. For me, they're clearly the best assault unit in the game. Um, absolutely. And if you uh, disallow that, then assaults become way less. However, if you comp them, you'll typically get a broader spectrum of units because um, because they go away, the assault is less dangerous. Um, the British players will typically bring something else. Um, so it opens up all kinds of stuff once you start comping how many Gurkhas can be in a, in a tournament or an event. I've even seen people comp how many howitzers you can bring, which I hadn't thought of as being particularly overpowered, but I did see an event where you could only bring two howitzers. So, um, okay. Um, and that, of course, uh, limits how much um, leaf blower builds you can build, uh, especially for French, I think. Um, not something that I feel needs to be comped, but was comped. Um, we also see uh, like a positive comp that happens sometimes where MMG teams and LMGs, um, especially on infantry, uh, get some kind of bonus. People are borrowing from the jugger pack, uh, giving giving out extra pins or giving out free LMGs. Um, and I and this is because basically they're bad. They they they've been deemed out by the meta and have been deemed out for quite a long time. Um, I just recently had a, a long winded uh, Facebook debate about the, the efficiency of MMG teams and LMG teams. No, they're, they're just objectively bad. Go and watch my video on, on objectively bad. There's nothing to be said for the price uh, range that they're at. Uh, they're, it's indefensible uh, to spend that amount of points on MMG teams. Like a regular MMG team will cost you 50 points. You can buy a an airborne recce jeep for Brits for forty five points with double machine guns, so ten shots and recce. It, it, there, there's no comparison. Uh, it's just nope. You don't go there. Um, and there's also quite a lot of packs that encourage heavy or medium tanks because they're typically not seen. The meta is uh, and has been for quite a long time that that uh, light tanks is the way to go, especially the darker tanks, of course, with the tanks with a lot of machine guns, which means that you rarely see heavy or medium tanks. So this is one way of finding out what the meta is, what people are actually trying to discourage and encourage in their packs. And these are the things. Um, we can also start to talk about um, how meta is not the same around the world. We're not all in agreement, which is kind of nice actually, because that means that when you go to new places, you're learning different things, which was a huge benefit for me personally uh, in my gaming uh, like skill set. That once I started going abroad to tournaments, I was immediately struck by how different people were playing bold action, and I've learned quite a lot from that. So there's a huge diversity in local regional metas, in national metas, uh, in the influence of leading characters around the world in the bold action environment. There are certain people who are, um, I wouldn't say like, like the, they're, the, 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 um, they're the captains of bold action, but they, they, they aren't necessarily, but they are figures where other figures, uh, other players sort of gravitate to them. So they drive bold action, uh, these leading figures. I've experienced this quite a lot in very many different places. Um, and what they think can be more important than the group itself, because the, they can form the groups around them to what they think is good. So one of these uh, things uh, happened is um, like, uh, in, in Italy, there was, when I visited uh, Milan, I had played a game there, and the leading figures there were all very much into uh, theater platoons. They th felt like theater platoons, they were way more balanced, so everyone was playing theater platoons. And we never play theater platoons in Denmark. 
uh, in competitive play never ever um and this has been taken up this theatre platoon by the way has been taken up by by the scotch by alistair unicom and who has run several uh, tournaments using theatre platoons it's brilliant but it's the influence of those leading figures um those leading people their personalities um that that makes or breaks uh, like a lo local meta i also say the uh, the wtc has had a huge influence on on uh, the meta of bold action uh, not necessarily because it it's 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 not a lot of people that go to the wtc compared to how many people of you play the game i mean um but uh, it has had the effect of having uh, some players maybe some of the leading figures in some of the metas um exposed to other metas so there's been slowly forming a sort of international meta around the WTC and around the competitions where people travel to from abroad. Um, and this, I think, has been very healthy. Um, it's developed the meta quite a lot. Um, it's developed a lot of players into very, very, very good players. Um, and it's grown the competitive scene quite a lot which is where the meta thrives, right? Um, in in the thematic or casual scene, the meta only thrives as a negative thing, something to comp, something to avoid um, because it, it ruins the fun or whatever. But in the competitive scene, that is, that's the thing. We really like the meta, like trying to break it, like trying to develop it, um, analyzing it. So, and there's been a huge influence from other games that has meta, um, like 40k or whatever. Um, the way I think about meta, about army builds, about uh, what is good or not, min-maxing, points value, uh, all of that is something that's, that's borrowed more or less directly from 40k. And you can sort of see the same thing happening in many other games that has a meta. Um, X-Wing, I know X-Wing as well, Infinity the game. All of that has a meta and the way you talk about it, the way you think about it, has influenced bold action as well. So, let me talk about some of the meta that I've seen in different places. And I've actually reached out to people in these places trying to get feedback on what I am seeing if they're recognizing that and if it's sort of true. So uh, US, Canada, and, and I'll lump these in together as a North American meta, which is really difficult because it's very, very, very regional. Like the people who live uh, near Toronto, hi Ron, um, they have one meta, right? The people who live near Michigan have one meta. The people who live in Georgia around Atlanta, they have one meta. So there, there are very many different regional metas and they don't mix that much because they, they haven't really got North American championships. They've got a, a few big cons, Adepticon and such, where, where people go and play, but, but it's, it's very, very difficult for them to get a national meta because they have those regional metas with leading figures that sort of drive whatever is good and in that location. I have been told, haven't experienced this much, right? I've, I've been to both the US and Canada. I've only played games in Canada. I haven't played in the US yet on my to-do list. But uh, I've been told that that um, like a, a couple of years back, uh, the focus was mostly in some of these regional metas on mobility, uh, the ability to skirmish and on getting recce. So people would buy... Um, still buys <laughs> hi ryan the uh the infamous uh hellcat um and uh, they would buy uh, american uh, marines with bars um they would have trucks they would have uh, dodge trucks they would have trucks for their germans as well there was a whole uh short sharp period of cavalry um, America were, was and is the uh, the go-to nation for many people in North America. Um, 
and I think there's some sort of patriotism going on there um, with people maybe having served, uh, like recreating the forces that they served in or uh, their fathers served in in the Second World War, or grandfathers, whatever. Um, so th there is like... There is that aspect of it, of a homage um, to some of these units, and, and therefore uh, America is very common as a nation in the US and in Canada. Um, there's also f was at least a focus on, on mixed bag. Still, I think, is quite a, a lot of it, the army builds that I'm seeing from the US um, are still heavily focused on skirmishing and on mixed bag having a lot of different tools in your bag and there are quite a lot of these regional methods that are comp heavy so they're not uh, what you'll see in many of the uh, european methods where at least for for national tournaments for open tournaments they'll be comp light um, maybe they'll have like one restriction of something um, but but typically not that much um, but you'll see a lot of comp in, in America compared to that. Um, how is it changing then? Well, uh, from what I'm told, uh, people have started experimenting with new nations. This is especially something that's true after the Americans were exposed to the WTC and the international meta as such. Um, that was not a rude awakening, but it was an eye-opener for many of them, I think. Um, and there have been experiments with full squats as well, which is something that we're seeing uh, people pick up from a very specific meta. I'm going to come back to that. But but full strength squads is being experimented with uh, as well. Right now, we're not seeing much cav uh, in America, nor uh, much barbecue and practically no MSU. Um, so multiple small units that is is not really present yet, but we might see it in the future. I'm guessing because it's it's not overpowered. It's not Gurkhas, so it's it's something that could still be a thing. Um, I think what what's mainly keep, keeping people back from the MSU is that when you have comp, you typically also have an auditized cap, um, which is a huge problem for MSU armies. They they live on having lots of order dice. So um, not only are they comping order dice a little bit down in many American events, they, they also have a tendency to run order dice rather low compared to Europe. Um, so where in a European event, you'll typically see um, order dice be around the 14, 15 uh, mark. You'll see in America, they are around the 13 uh, order dice mark on average. So lower than European standards, um, and they're still comp heavy. I've also been following the South African uh, tournament scene uh, these past two years, and there seems to have been a, at least previously, been a, sp a split between Joburg, between Johannesburg and the Cape. Um, if that is still a thing, maybe not as much as it has been, but. Um, because there is so, such a huge difference. So there seems to have been at least two metas, two areas uh, with metas. Um, rather logically enough, the same thing as with the, uh, with the US in, in America happens in South Africa, where there's a lot of Afrikaans speaking people, which is a German language. So Germans and Americans were popular. I think also that has something to do with the uh, box sets, uh, like the Band of Brothers box set that everyone owns at least once of, um, like one box of that. Uh, so it's Germans and Americans were the go-to nations uh, previously. Uh, I know previously that Finnish were considered, considered to be the strongest nation, um, something that also happens years back in, in Europe, that the Finns were winning tournaments. Um, and that they had low order dice, uh, again, like like we saw with the Americans, lower than the European uh, order dice count. A thing that, that happened, a sort of build that I haven't talked about because it's not really a competitive build, but was a competitive build for quite a long time in South Africa, apparently, was the, the camping Germans build, where you would have seven veterans with an LMG, with a Panzerfaust, and then maybe a Panzer IV to support, and then they would sit back and just 
blast you off the table. That is the pa- uh, the, the camping Germans pack uh, uh, build, and we are not seeing that at all in the international meta at all. I, I think maybe like when the game first came out, like version one, we may have seen something like it. We're not seeing it anymore, and and armies like that are definitely not winning games. Um, so, but that was a thing in the previous South African meta. So how has it changed? Well, the darker tanks have arrived. Um, the darker tanks and the Jaff- ch- uh, the Chaffees, so Stewards, uh, Panzer Threes, um, Polizei tanks, they've arrived, made a huge splash. Um, the toolbox lists are still a thing, um, but but maybe with more elements of assault troops. Uh, I think the the push troop, uh, the Gurkhas, have made a splash there as well. We're still not seeing any leaf blower HE spam lists, um, but at least the Joburg crowd have picked up the Jogger pack um, and are running with that. So, so that is also a change where the Jogger pack has made a huge difference here. Um, talking about Eastern Europe, Poland. Um, Poland is a weird one because when when we first encountered them at the WTC. Uh, we were very surprised at what went in Poland. Since then, I've been following the Warsaw tournaments, which is their main, like, big competitive tournament. And they also are running the Jogger Pack. The Polish have a higher focus on foe tank lists and Death Star lists, so people will be focusing on their tanks in Poland, typically. Um, we are also seeing Japan and Polish Lancers, naturally, of course, again, um, a bit of nationalist pride there, um, and they are running with the Jogger Pack. The Poles also have, logically enough, since they're running a lot of tanks in their lists, they have a lower order dice count than I'm typically seeing in the rest of Europe. They have 13 order dice count, 12 order dice count sometimes in competitive tournaments. Um, so, so again, rather different. And if ever we're going to see anyone do well with a Death Star list, I think it will be a Polish player um, because they're they're training that quite extensively. They're doing that quite extensively, something that the rest of us are not really doing. Spain, Spain was also a weird one once we encountered them, and they've been really dominating on the international scene. Right, the Spanish have won um, one, two, three WTCs. So they're really, really good players. The Spanish have a huge competitive scene. They have also have a huge uh, thematic scene. So there's a lot of players there. And the big tournaments in Spain are attended by the largest amount of bold action players I've heard of in any place in the world. So they will have, like the Madrid Open had, I think, 80 signups, which is insane. That's a lot of people. Um, now, the Spanish have... Uh, developed quite a lot of their own meta here, um, which is which favors really, really good players. I think um, they have a focus on full strength units. They were the first to develop this, um, and it was spread via the the WTC team and uh, via Manuel, the the German team captain, who is Spanish by nationality, although he lives in Germany. Um, so, so they sort of championed this idea that full strength units, especially if they were shirkers, um, because they get a reroll. Um, so you can get them very cheap, but still get them to move because they got a reroll. Um, so that's a whole thing. And they were the first ones to come up with that and use it, utilize it in, in international games and do well with it. Um, they also have a tendency to run regulars uh, instead of veterans or inexperienced dudes. They will quite often run regulars, even regular shirkers. Um, and they'll have Fausts in their units. Um, one, maybe two Fausts um, in many of their units if they can take them. Because they are quite often taking Germans and uh, Soviets. Autocannons is also a thing. They were the first to champion uh, autocannon spam which is a really, really good idea because it, it counters some of the 
uh, the things that are really good right now, the darker tanks and the veterans, uh, the autocannons are deadly to those. The first people I saw doing uh, forward deployment, FD, um, were also Spanish. So who would have armies where most of the army or all the army would forward deploy. So they are the cutting edge of many of the developments of the international meta because they're bringing it to the international tournaments and then winning them. Uh, they have a competitive um, average of around 13 to 14, a little lower than what is average in Northern Europe, but still within like the 13, 14 order dice um, average. Then I'll talk about the Danish slash Northwestern Europe uh, measure because I'll include the Dutch and part of, of the Germans because we are very similar in, in the things that we think is good and I think especially after we've been starting to going to each other's tournaments we can easily drive to each other's tournaments which means that like during the last year I've been to three tournaments with German Dutch and Danish players so that happens quite a lot and and that means that the meta we have developed a sort of it's harmonizing between these nations a little bit um, we used to see Japan, the US, and Soviets being uh, the top dogs, uh, and uh, like uh, barbecue was also a thing. If you go back a year, a year and a half, barbecue was everywhere. Assault was there, but it was really struggling against the flamethrowers. Um, light tanks, of course, everywhere. Um, howitzers with spotters was also a thing, where you would have uh, like 25 pounders. Um, for, for the Brits, um, light howitzers for everyone else as well, medium howitzers sometimes, um, and mobility was king. You would see trucks, people that were bringing like stuff to have their uh, um, infantry being transported onto the table, into the center of the board, and then unload. Of course, also because many of them were bringing barbecue lists, so they would need trucks, transport, uh, universal carriers. Um, the the order dice count back like a year and a half, two years was 13 order dice, but that has increased um, over time because now we're moving into a meta where Brits, the USA and Soviets are the, the main uh, competitive armies. Um, assault, cavalry, skirmishing and four tanks are the, are the builds that we're seeing most of the time. Um, Barbecue has, has sort of died out again. Um, and one of the, the, the things that I think we've championed in this meta is the inexperienced medium mortar, which by now is every bloody where. Um, for, for Danish tournaments, we're seeing this inexperienced medium mortar in almost all lists. Almost all. Uh, the Brits haven't picked the, this up yet, but uh, the Dutch and Germans absolutely have. The, um, the order dice uh, average for a thousand points is around 14 to 15 order dice. Um, so a little high for some of the metas in Eastern Europe and, and the old metas we've been seeing. Definitely high compared to um, American meta, um, but yeah. Um, I, I'll get back to the British Mesa because that's a thing in itself, but um, but it is included here in, in what I'll say now because um, the main difference from from the Northwestern uh, European Mesa to the British Mesa is the barbecue is definitely still a thing in Great Britain. Otherwise, everything I have, had, I have on this slide actually uh, fits with the British Mesa as well. So... The lessons of the past year. This is another way to go about this. So right now I've gone, talked about the comp. I've talked about what I've been seeing in different messages, just following tournaments. Um, and what people have told me once I reached out to them said, can you, am I right? Is, is this what you're seeing as well? We can also go back over the last year and just look at the tournaments that I've featured on this channel, all of them. There's been 11 big tournaments over the last year. Five of them were nationals. Uh, this includes the WTC, and they range from between 500 to 1,250 points. 
I will discount the 500 ones because the meta turns weird once you get down to those 500 points. Um, and you, you need quite a lot of comp in order to do that. And I've been following tournaments in the US, in Europe, in the UK, and in South Africa. I have not been able to follow, and if, if anyone could get them to contact me, please, the Bacon Burgers or HMG Podcast, um, I am really interested in finding out about Australian meta. But until they do, I have reached out to them, until they get back to me, I am not able to actually follow and, and give feedback on that. So that is out. Um, until I get more info on the tournaments that is happening in, in Asia and South America, that is out. I'm very willing to hear about them. So write to me. I'll include my email in the description to this video. Write to me if you want me to follow and try to do meta-analysis of what you're doing locally. But this is what I have been following over the past year. And the of all the lists that did well, so I actually went back and looked through all the lists that were in the top five for all of these events, and I included the top ten for some of them. Um, in the top, I had 22 British lists. So the British are by far the most winning nation right now. Um, by far, because the next biggest one, one is the Soviets, and there are only 13 lists in the top lists of these 11 tournaments. The US is very close to the Soviets at and have 10 lists in the top. Some of them have won events, by the way. Uh, so it's not just British win all events. No, 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 no. Um, these, these are the top five. All of these nations have won events, uh, with the exception of the Japanese, the Canadian, and the Polish. Um, seven German lists have made it in the, to the top brackets, and these... Um, are very interesting for a number of reasons. We're trying to see if we can make Germany great again. Some of the players who did this took German uh, lists to very, very competitive tournaments. Achilles did so to the Spanish nationals. Russell did so to the Britcon event. So there's been a lot of attempts at making Germany great again. And I think with uh, Tough Guard and Code Blue, I think we're going to see Germany get a lot of competitive advantages. I think they are going to go back into this top bracket. Um, and I don't think the Brits are evolving in a positive way. So that is always good to see. Maybe we will see other lists come to the forefront now. Um, only three Japanese lists, so the Japanese are still lacking behind, sadly lacking behind. The Canadians and the Polish are uh, outliers, I think. Uh, one of them was a very, very good Polish player uh, who brought a Polish Lancer list to an, an event and, and came top, uh, I think he came second or third. Um, so that will happen sometimes, but... Uh, not not every time and and polish lists are, are rather rare so and it's not everyone who can play that to to the top uh, bracket for for events so um an outlier um but definitely something i could see that player doing again michael so what units are in this bracket so i look through the lists and um stewards are of course everywhere all the uh, um, german uh, italian equivalents the uh, panzer three c's or the polisai tanks um every bloody where Th those are the darker tanks they're everywhere not universally so some people do take other stuff um interestingly enough the lee and the uh, crusader aa and the Kugelblitz are all uh, present in in some of these lists. I think because they are all very very good against Stuart. So some people are taking anti-Stuart uh, choices for their tank choices. Gurkhas, engineers, skirmish Americans are also there. The infantry choices uh, that are the top uh, most popular ones. Um, engineers, of course, uh, with flamethrowers most often, but not universally so. Sometimes they're just being taken because you can take a lot of gear on them 
VARs, SMGs, all that stuff. Uh, and Skirmish Americans is basically everywhere in every American list. You'll see like Marines with a BAR and rifles everywhere. Um, so that is also a very competitive choice. As for uh, artillery support, I'm seeing the Land Mattress uh, or 114mm for the Americans and the Nebelwerfer for the Germans um, in many lists. But we're not seeing them uh, overemployed. So they're, they're like one, maybe two uh, multi rocket launchers, but not a lot more than that. Uh, so the, the new bashers are out of the top brackets. Inexperienced uh, mortar or uh, regular medium mortar with a spotter, especially for the UK meta, that is still a thing. Um, also, everywhere. Light howitzers are the most common howitzers taken, but not universally the only howitzer. Um, however, if we're looking at lieutenants, people are going with the cheapest lieutenants across the board. Um, they are taking inexperienced second lieutenants. If they are running Germans, they're taking the SS uh, inexperienced second lieutenant. That is even cheaper. Um, so that we're not seeing Snap 2 as a thing uh, at all. If we're talking about forward deployers, uh, Soviet scouts uh, is really a thing. Back a few years, uh, native irregulars was a thing. They got uh, knocked back. Um, they were nerfed, and then scouts, Soviet scouts, and um, also guerrilla uh, warriors for the Chinese, um, and snipers, uh, still a thing for, for all of these, for forward deployment. As for gear, I'm seeing not a lot of gear. SMGs can be a thing on some units, um, especially in certain builds, like you'll have a, a, maybe a Paragurka build where you're running Paragurkas or engineers in Bren carriers, and you'll equip them with SMGs. Um, typically, we'll, we're seeing single Fausts, but we're not seeing anyone in the top bracket bringing LMGs. Um, very, very few assault rifles as well. Um, so the gear is kept to a minimum. Um, the Jeep and the Flamer team, the old trusty Jeep Flamer, that is everywhere. Um, and that combo is the only way to run it, basically. The only way it's being run anywhere is a Jeep and a Flamer, or the Jeep equivalent, Kugel, um, Kugelwagen or whatever, uh, Kuragani. Um, so that is a thing still. And it, I think it's just because many people find it really, really useful, no matter what. And it's very cheap, like a Flamer team, that costs 50 points, a Jeep 17 if you're buying it inexperienced, that's 67 points and you have a flamethrower in your list. Very useful. Um, universal carriers, a lot of those, but not universal. Um, Dodge trucks for every American army has a few of these. Um, and just regular transport trucks are still a thing, but not as much as we have seen. The the mobility lists have gone a little bit uh, away. Um, and then dog mines for the Soviets. The the most, the top dog in anti-tank, in the anti-tank bracket is the, the, the dog mines, basically. For everyone else, they're going to have to settle for a Faust um, or something in their tank bracket. The builds, the builds that do well. Um, the builds that I'm seeing the most of in these top lists are I'm seeing skirmish elements or mixed bag elements where you have a lot of different uh, uh, tools in your toolbox and then you have most of your infantry has skirmish capability. Um, so riflemen, lots and lots of riflemen. Uh, many of them seven men big. Uh, so seven-man units, both for regulars and for veterans, um, because it's just very useful having people, you know, you, you need four kills before they need to take a test, right? Um, which is very unlikely. So so that happens quite a lot. Um, equally uh, popular is the tanks or the faux tanks, uh, where you have a lot of armored vehicles in your lists, or you have several tanks because you have multiple platoons. Um, 
supported by armored cars, so you'll typically see in the double platoon list, you'll see four armored vehicles. Um, that is also very, very prevalent in the top lists. The third most prevalent thing is assault elements having uh, Gurkhas or uh, SMG armed uh, tough fighters in your Soviets. Um, that is still a thing. And it's not universal, it's not everywhere, but it is in many lists. Horde lists still make an appearance in these uh, top lists, but not as prevalent as uh, the assault tank or mixed bag elements. Um, we're seeing like five of the lists in these top uh, brackets have horde elements. Four of them have MSU, uh, especially the um, the FSSF scouts have been a thing. Um, they, they've made a splash and, and appearing are appearing in top lists, especially American lists, um, this MSU thing. Multi-rocket launchers, um, new bashing or multiple multi-rocket launchers are not really a thing, but many of the lists uh, in the top bracket have one or two. Only four of the lists have two, but that's still some. Leaf blowers, not very prevalent, but we do have see some lists, four lists have multiple HE options. Uh, barbecue, however, that was very popular going back a year and a year and a half. They've mostly disappeared, except from the British meta, where they're still appearing. Um, so most of the barbecue lists that you're seeing here, doing uh, ending in the top bracket, they're all of them from British tournaments. Death Stars, um, still a thing, um, doesn't happen often, but happens sometimes, uh, especially in comped uh, tournaments. So we have two Death Stars that appeared in, in the top bracket, and I know at least one of them was a an American tournament that had heavy comp. So um, still well done for whoever ran that list, but it's not appearing in any of the, uh, the mainland European tournaments. Um, and, and two Death Stars in the top brackets here is not a lot. Forward deployment appeared once, so the Spanish idea of forward deploying may be going back out again. We don't know yet. Um, and cavalry appeared only once. So so the, the old meta of barbecuing, of forward deploying, of cavalry, all of that is pretty much gone from the meta as it stands today. And that is it. That is where we are at right now with the meta of bold action as we stand right now on hopefully the precipice of version three where everything will be changed up again. Going forward right now, I'm looking into the autumn here. We have World Open War. That's another huge international tournament. I'm going there in, in two weeks. So that will be very interesting to see what happens there, what the meta will be. Um, after that, we have a competitive tournament here in Denmark, Bring Your Guns, which I'm going to. And then we go into the spring where we have the WTC. We'll have another huge tournament in Holland. We'll have tournaments in Spain. We'll have uh, the Danish Nationals and Sealand Open. So a lot of, of competitive tournaments going there. And it will be interesting to see how this meta develops whether or not version three comes in and disrupts everything or whether or not code blue, tough gut will change up things. We don't know yet, but let's hope. Uh, there's a lot, at least a lot of competitive, interesting competitive choices coming up from the Germans. So Germany might be back. That was it, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.